kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, Hey everyone, how's it going out there in YouTube land and Facebook group uh, for Metro Detroit off-market real estate group. So today we have a great, great guest. Now, this is kind of odd. Yeah, everybody, you know, I, I bring on people that have a lot of experience with uh, in, in the real estate field, things like that. But actually my neighbor, Ron, had some real estate questions and they were around like section eight some you know things that how he can grow his money and i figured you know what let's bring him on the podcast let him ask his questions because guess what not only him but all all you other people out there that are just starting out might have the exact same questions and and want to know the answers so Without further ado, I'm going to bring on, without further to do, to do, I'm going to bring on my neighbor, Ron. Ron, how you doing today? Good, real good. Awesome. Awesome. So first off, before we get into your questions, tell me a little bit about, I, I know about you because you're my neighbor and, you know, we talk all the time. So, but let tell everybody else about who you are, kind of what your background is so that, you know, they can get a little bit of understanding and what type of investing have you done in the past? Okay, sure. Uh, first of all, my education, uh, I was a Michigan State grad in finance and then I went on to get an MBA in finance. I joined Chrysler, oh God, about 40 years ago and kind of had three separate careers in Chrysler. My first one was, of course, in finance. I went through all the financial uh, branches there for about a dozen years, and then I jumped into uh, product planning and uh, strategic planning for another dozen years, and that was a lot of fun. And then finally, I ended up in uh, marketing for my last dozen years, which was uh, really exciting. But I uh, I decided to retire a couple of years ago, and uh, just at home now and managing my money. And um, with the crazy economy that we have, we always have to look for opportunities out there. And yes. uh, I, in, in some of our uh, discussions in the backyard, you know, you were telling yeah. me that you were, you know, sometimes in, involved in these real estate transactions, uh, termed like yep. Section Eight, you know, to help out some lower income people. And mm -hmm. I actually, as uh, when I was younger in my twenties, I owned a condo that I, I uh, rented out to people, uh, not low mm -hmm. income, not Section Eight or anything like that. And it was some good experiences, some bad experiences. But I decided right. to step away from that, you know, when my, my career started heating up more. But now that I have more time on my hands, I'm wondering if there is uh, an opportunity out there, especially with this, this mm -hmm. Section 8 opportunity, because it sounds yep. so interesting. I wasn't familiar with it before you started telling me about it. Yeah, most definitely. So that's the thing with, um, you know, they have low income. In Section 8, they have a bad rap. It's just the type of tenant that you you get. Um, so what Section 8 is, is it's a government run program where they will pay for a portion of the renters uh, rent based on their income. So the more income they make, the less Section 8 pays. OK, it goes by their income. Um, and then at certain point that they'll, if they make too much, they won't qualify for section eight and they have to do just regular rentals. Um, but section eight is to help subsidize the, 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 uh, rental income that they can't pay. For instance, somebody living on a McDonald's salary, you know, working at McDonald's every day. You know, um, you know, things like that, minimum wage or somebody with, uh, you know, a few kids that um, are, is working a lower income job, you know, so, um, you know, so is that's this a kind of where section run? Is this a it state is a, run program or federal? No. Um, so 
I believe Section Eight is is state ran. State ran. Okay. And is so actually depending on the city, it's actually there's different cities that have their different places. Like for instance, Detroit has its own office. You know, as soon as you go on the suburbs, and they have their own office in the suburbs and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's each county has its own uh, um, own area. So, so I would imagine they would have their own set of rules too, as to who would qualify, how much you would get. So depending on what kind of a rental property you pick up, you would have to go to that county office to say, what are your rules subject to uh, Section Eight? So I would say yes, um, but the Section Eight as a whole pretty much have the same rules. It's just where the income comes from, what county it comes from. That's all. So okay. Um, the, the, the section eight itself. So I think they have a big standard of rules and I could be wrong as far as whether it's federal or state. Um, mm -hmm. but section eight as a whole, um, you know, they have their own rules. Uh, okay. okay yeah. There you go. It is a federal, uh, it's a federal done program that is operated in Michigan. So it's operated okay. by Mishta. So, uh, okay. Tara, Tara, thank you for that for that comment. I appreciate that. So, um, so Tara Lynn from our Facebook group answered that question. And so it's, uh, it's ran by the state. It's a federally done program, um, mm -hmm. according to Tara there, uh, which makes sense because Fed section eight is everywhere. Okay. It's okay. not just in Michigan. So is it an open-ended program in that um, hey, you only can be uh, on Section 8 for five years or can you be on it for 25 years? You can be on it as long as your income qualifies. And I think you might have to re-qualify every year. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. So you, so don't you might have to show your income every year that, that you have to, that you do have to watch. Um, you have to show your income every year as a Section 8 person. And it may get to a point where that Section 8 tenant um, pays more and more in rent and Section 8 pays less and less. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. The key thing is this. To get good properties with Section 8, you, the, mm -hmm. the, the good thing about Section 8 is that whatever portion that is, it's called a voucher. They get a voucher, say... We, we got a voucher for $1,500, okay? Um, okay, so uh, Michelle is saying that, or Michael, sorry, Michael is saying, you have to report changes in your income uh, into your housing immediately, okay? So okay. hopefully they keep an eye on that, but sometimes they don't, so. Um, okay. But if you don't follow the rules, you can easily get kicked out. For instance, if they have an eviction on the record, Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if they get evicted while they're on Section 8, they get kicked out of the program. They can't rejoin. Okay. Okay. So they, them as a tenant, are are incentivized not to really break the rules and not to be a bad tenant. But as a okay. landlord, you got to make sure everything is up to snuff because you have to have a yearly um, inspection. Okay, an annual inspection, which I would imagine yep. you'd pay for and everything else. So yep. uh, at, at the start, let's say I find a, a small house looking to purchase, um, get with a, a lending agency. And mm -hmm. um, do you have to disclose, hey, I might be doing Section 8 work with this particular house? Or no. is it none of the financial institutions uh, business? No, the only thing that they have to know is whether it's going to be an investment property or mm -hmm. basically whether it's going to be a homestead or not a homestead, whether okay. you're going to be using it as an investment or whether you're going to be living there. Okay. okay. That correct because me that, that changes the terms. Me. Okay. I was just going to say, correct me if I'm wrong, but if it's an investment property, a little bit more risk involved, therefore a higher mortgage rate. So depending on the mortgage you get, if you or whether it's going in your name or an LLC, okay, mm -hmm. um, that determines that you can get multiple properties in your personal name. If it's an investment, more than likely they're going to want twenty percent down, twenty to twenty five percent down, okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
and versus if it's a personal residence, you can do, you know, conventional three to 5%, you know, so um, is one more advantageous is one more advantageous than the other doing an LLC or, um, you know, just taking it on yourself. Um, getting the rates with them, but then you are opening yourself up when for lawsuits with the rental. So if you are planning on using as a rental, I always do recommend purchasing with an LLC. Um, or if you purchase it with your, your name, you can, you can transfer it to an LLC later on. Okay. Okay. Um, so keep that in mind, but, uh, you know, it is best for liability reasons to purchase no, no, it with an LLC. Yeah protect your yeah. yeah your yourself um so if you do an llc and um yeah you have income i would imagine there's uh, maybe a unique tax filings do you know if there's any so, any you, so you you treat it just like a regular business income coming in which is your rental income income going out for um you know any maintenance issues that you had taxes that you paid things like that anything that you spent on that property also mm. one thing that you you do get uh, as an investment property is you do get what's called um i'm trying to remember the right term for i uh, a, a depreciation on the property okay so you take the purchase price say you purchased it for 100 grand okay mm. all right let me bring up the calculator here um, say you, you purchased it for a hundred grand. Okay. And, uh, you're going to divide that by 27.5. And so what you can do is at a hundred thousand dollar property, if you purchase it for a hundred thousand dollars now per year, you can write off 36, $3,636 and 36 cents every year is automatically written off just because you own the property for the next 27 and a half years. What if you take out like a 15 year mortgage? Can you depreciate it over a 15 year life? There's an, the depreciation is just a tax write off and that's the name that has nothing to do with the mortgage. You can buy it cash and you get the same depreciation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But it has to be the 27 and a half years. Yeah. So the reason why they do that is because that's the tax code, the mm -hmm. tax, the IRS says in 27 and a half years, your property will be worth zero. Now we all know it's not. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that's the tax code. Okay. And okay. now what you can do is say, um, a lot of people, what they do is they purchase it with a loan. Okay. Mm -hmm say your loan payment is a thousand dollars a month we're just going to use these for round numbers okay okay your loan payment is thousand dollars a month okay after um you know th that's your piti your property insurance taxes everything i also then you uh you have to account for vacancy uh, capital expenditure, like say all of that adds up to about another $200 a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, just for round numbers. So now you're all in at $1,200 a month and, and you can rent it for $1,500 a month. Okay. So now you're cash flowing $300 a month. Okay. At the end of the day, you're putting $300 a month in your check, but not only that, your tenant is paying down your mortgage on the mm -hmm. property. So you're mm -hmm. not only doing that, but you're gaining equity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you did a, say you did a 15 year loan on that, well, guess what you can do in the next 15 years, you can refinance and get money out, go buy the next one. Mm -hmm. And guess who's paying down the mortgage, your tenant. Okay. As long so as you do the numbers, right. Okay. So if you're uh, managing this as like an independent business, if you want to stop doing section eights after a few years or whatever, you can just stop. There's no complications yeah. with taxes or anything else. 
So you can get no. in and out of Section 8 um, renters at any time. Yeah, the biggest thing with Section 8 is you just have to get a, um, you have to be able to accept them, but you mm -hmm. have to pass their inspections, which if you pass the city inspections, um, maybe a property manager will help more um, explain that a little bit better. But uh, you should be able, if you pass the city inspections, you should be able to pass the Section 8 inspections, no problem. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room